feeling a little squeezed at the end of every month? Well, you are not alone. Sure, we all know the importance of saving up for retirement. No one wants to be old, sick and broke. But the reality is, many of us are scrambling to pay for mortgages, car loans, insurance, phone bills, utility bills. And it doesn't help that a large crop of Gen Y and Zs believe in living in the moment and think those working hard to build wealth are mindless slaves. We are talking about a group of people who think that not taking their money out from their bank accounts is a form of investment. Which is why EPF sounded the alarm recently, saying that the younger generation should really take charge of their savings and investment strategy by not putting all eggs into what most seem to see as the only basket, the retirement fund. It's no wonder they are worried. More than half of EPF members aged 54 had less than 50,000 ringgit in their accounts which will only last them, at max, four years. In fact, forget four years. EPF says that some of its members just spent all their savings in one go and ended up having to live in poverty after that. So back to us. Why can't we even save, let alone invest? The most obvious reason is the double whammy of high cost and low wages. Look at it this way. A plate of char kway teow cost about 3 ringgit 50 cent 10 years ago. Today, it has increased to about 6 ringgit 50 cent to 7 ringgit. It's up by almost 70%. Have our salaries increased as much? No. MIDF says medium wage growth is to reach 6.5% this year, while expected inflation is 4.5%. But five years ago, Malaysian wage growth was at 5.6%, while inflation was at 1.66%. So while our inflation has more than doubled, our wages have not. And why aren't wages growing as fast as we like? Because, as DM Analytics' Muhammad Abdul Halid points out, employers are keeping their profits instead of sharing with their workers. In Malaysia, for every one dollar that we generate, bulk of it goes to corporates, mm. uh, operating a, a surplus. Very little goes to workers. Even compared to Singapore, Singapore gives more to workers than give to business owners. According to Kazana Research Institute, only 32.9% of total national income goes to the workers, compared with 42.3% in Singapore, 48% in China, 55% in the UK, and 55.7% in the States. So yes, a lot needs to be changed to ensure that the cost of living is manageable, that our disposable incomes are larger. However, the truth is, there is a lot we can't change when it comes to the more structural issues, it sucks, but that is the reality. And if I were to talk about it, I would go on forever. But it doesn't mean we can't do something about it ourselves. Yes, we are spending more, but do we need to? A lot of us now live by the YOLO, the principle that you may get hit by the bus tomorrow, so you better live now. Plus, in an era of instant gratification, bragging has never been easier with the advent of social media. Somehow, buying that new iPhone or a new car feels a thousand times more justified when you get to brag about it on Instagram. All of us know those kinds of people, right? Who pretentiously post hashtag blessed when you know they should be posting hashtag in debt. But if we prioritize our spending over material possessions, cut down on little luxuries, upskill ourselves or make that career move instead of staying somewhat contented in a crappy low-paying job, or maybe start a small business, and explore the different ways of building wealth, life will be less hard. And thanks to our age and the power of compound interest, the sooner we start putting away money, the easier it is to reach financial independence. Let's not ignore the future reality. Without any form of savings, our only option is to continue working till we are 100. Just saying.